Well, thank you. I'm so pleased to be here with all of you and so grateful for the work that you do. And to my friend Lisa Wozniak, the executive director of Michigan LCV, I couldn't ask for a better partner. Dan Eichinger, my interim director of Eagle, who's doing a phenomenal job. Corey Connolly from the Michigan Office of Climate and Clean Energy is three wonderful examples of the battalion of people who help us do this work. I'm really excited to be here with all of you and so grateful. Um, so welcome and hello to the Healthy Climate Conference. I hope that you've had a great first day in Detroit and I'm excited to share some of my climate and clean energy vision for Michigan. Now we are on a roll right now with a working majority in Lansing, which Lisa just talked about, yes? And a slate of powerful economic development levers and billions in federal resources on the table, we are in a strong position to lead the future of clean energy and climate action. We all know that climate action is a kitchen table issue. It's about good paying jobs, safe, reliable, affordable energy, clean air and water. It's tangible and it makes a difference in our lives. Climate action requires, demands collaboration and that's why this conference is so important. It gives you, leading policymakers and action takers, space to identify shared challenges and develop strategies to get things done. One of the themes of this conference is to change everything. We need everyone, and I could not agree more. Ignorance, inaction, and only individualized responses are not going to get us anywhere. Today, we're gathering a year after the release of the My Healthy Climate Plan. I want to thank everyone who got it across the finish line. The plan offers a vision for more prosperous, sustainable Michigan. A Michigan where we generate 60% of our energy from reliable, renewable sources by 2030. Where we build a charging network to support 2 million electric vehicles on the road. Where we address environmental injustices and ensure equitable access to economic opportunities. Where we protect our land and our lakes, both great and small. These are ambitious but attainable goals. And to get us started, I am proud that Michigan's just received $3 million federal grant to implement the My Healthy Climate Plan. And today I'm more optimistic than ever about our ability to take climate action. In the last 15 months, President Biden has signed bills and that will create tens of thousands of Michigan jobs and jobs across the country and bring supply chains of cars, chips, and clean energy home. The bipartisan infrastructure law will help us fix the damn roads, replace lead pipes, <laughs> the damn pipes too, and build out electric vehicle charging network. The Inflation Reduction Act will help families switch to energy efficient appliances and electric vehicles, turbocharge domestic clean energy production from wind and solar. And the Chips and Science Act will attract cutting edge semiconductor manufacturing jobs and facilities to Michigan. So we don't have to rely on other countries to move our cars off the line and onto the road. These three laws, two of which were bipartisan, offer us a generational opportunity. It's why I was one of the first governors to sign executive directives to compete for resources from these bills. Harnessing the potential of these laws will require us, in the words of Senator Stabenow, to make stuff and grow stuff. And luckily, that's what we do. We invented the assembly line. We forged the American middle class. We supply produce and products to countless states and nations. We make stuff and we grow stuff. It's what we do. We have generations of manufacturing, know-how, world-class universities, and workforce. We regularly punch above our weight and build the future here in Michigan. You don't just take my word for it, though. I know you're scientists, you want to look at the numbers, and I love that. We are a top three state for sustainable development and battery and electric vehicle manufacturing. We are the number one state in the nation for energy sector job growth. We are home to nearly 
120,000 Michiganders working in clean energy and projected to create 167,000 more clean energy jobs. Since I took office, we have secured over 36,000 jobs building batteries, electric vehicles, chips, and $7.2 billion in new clean energy projects. And we're just getting started. In February, I released my budget, proposing over a billion dollars of investments to lower the cost of electric vehicles by up to $2,400, to build more chargers, hundreds more chargers, and to put more electric school buses on the road, to incentivize clean manufacturing and improve air quality in impacted communities, to create more tuition-free paths for hundreds of thousands of people to get good paying jobs in advanced manufacturing. And with all this momentum on our side, Michigan can define the future of clean energy, of climate action, of manufacturing, when, not if, we get it done. We will secure our energy independence and build safe, reliable grids. We will protect our water from pollution and PFAS. We will ensure every family has clean air to breathe, access to healthy, affordable local food, and pays less to power their home. And we will make Michigan a place where anyone can get an in-demand job, from those who don't require a college degree to careers in engineering and science. There's a path to prosperity in this work for every person. But ultimately, we do this work because we care about our future and we want to leave behind a better world. But you know who cares more about the future than I do? Our kids. I've gotten so many letters from young people, people who are concerned about climate change. And last month, I went to the Michigan Youth in Government Conference, where high schoolers from across the state come to our capital in Lansing with bills that they have written to debate big issues with fellow attendees. Several bills introduced by the students from across the state were about reducing emissions and protecting our water. Young people are demanding climate action because they have a greater stake in the future of Michigan than we do. They will live with the consequences of the choices that we make now. And that's why they are already leading, using their voices and their votes to fight for their priorities. Because of them, I am a climate optimist, and I encourage every one of you to be one as well. I'm pretty sure I'm talking to a bunch of climate optimists here. Back in 2009, Michigan's capacity for renewable energy was 17 megawatts. Just 17. Last year, it was 3,554. It's only going up. Some of Michigan's fastest growing industries today are advanced mobility and clean manufacturing. Wind and solar cost a fraction of what they used to in 2009 and generate more energy. Battery prices have dropped while efficiency has gone up. And this progress proves that we don't have to choose between prosperity and our planet. We've seen a lot of economic booms in American life, the auto boom, the tech boom, and now the climate boom. I am a climate optimist because I believe in our innate human ability to innovate. I'm a climate optimist because I know that future generations will rise to the occasion. I'm a climate optimist because hopelessness helps nobody. Our duty, our extraordinary privilege as people of power and resources is to fight for Michigan's future. Let's work together and get it done. I thank you, and now I'm going to turn it back over to Justin. I hope you all have a wonderful evening in the beautiful city of Detroit. Thank you. Thank you.